Lies. Lies. She said liars, lies. You said sinners. Interesting. Let's try it again. What do they call people who tell lies? Liars. Very good. Be more specific. Eighth commandment says we're not to steal. Don't take anything that doesn't belong to you regardless of its value, big or small. Have you ever done that? Yeah. And then what do they call people who do that? Robbers is good. It's better than stealers because it's in Pittsburgh. It's a football team. <laughs> what do they, 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 they really call people who take things that don't belong to them? Begins with a T. Thieves. Huh? Thieves. Right? Thieves. Right? Would that, would that make sense? If someone steals something, they're called a thief, right? Okay. Third commandment says not to commit blasphemy. You take a holy God's name, you use like a four letter filth word. Like, oh so, have you ever done that? Using God's name in vain. Yeah, oh, he knew that, yes. Like using God's name in vain. Like, you know, JD, GC, JC, GD, or OMG. A lot of people like with the text oh thing. That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, well, depending on your motive. I mean, if you're saying that one, I guess you can get away with it. But yeah, a lot of people are reading OMG, right? You ever done that? Yeah, well, in the Bible, it's very clear. It says, God will not hold them guiltless who takes his name in vain. So you're very serious about that. Think about it. It's his name. Why do we want to use his name to swear? What did he do to you? Think about it. Why don't you use Saddam Hussein or Adolf Hitler? They were kind of bad guys, right? I mean, they killed all these people. But God, they gave you your life. That's how you got to be born. You got blood going through your veins. You get married. You have children. It was all because of him. And yet our culture, I see it all the time. Out of their mouth, they're always swearing. Like, man, you. But he says, so be careful that one. One more and we're done. Seventh commandment says you're not to commit adultery. But before you answer, Jesus said, if you just look at another person and you're lusting after them, you're already committing adultery with them in your heart. Really? Have you ever looked at another oh person with lust? He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what's your first name? Can't hear you. Ernesto. Huh? Ernesto. Ernesto. Oh, okay, I'm Tom. I'm just watching. Hello. Pleased to meet you. So that's dope. I'm sorry. In your own admission, you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and adulterer at heart. Doesn't sound like a good person, does it? So if you were to face God, some drunk jumps the curb here and he kills us right now, and now you're facing the Holy God, how do you think he would find you based on those commandments? You've been, we've only done four, there's six more to go. Do you think you'd be innocent or guilty in his eyes? What do you think? Guilty. She even says the same thing. If you were guilty, then where would God have to send you? Heaven or hell? The middle. There is no middle. That's another lie from a religion that's out there. It's a bigger religion. There is no place called purgatory. It's either heaven or hell. You'd be going to hell. He's, he's honest. He understands that. Because he wants you to think you might be going to purgatory because they lied to you about that. You go, well, I could always wind up in purgatory. It won't be that bad. Yeah, and then they're going to pray for me. It'll get me out of purgatory. Well, that's crazy. No, yeah, you're right. God would have to see you as who you are. And he would have to judge you rightly so and send you to hell, which is horrible. So does that concern you that you might be going to hell? Huh? Yes, well, it should. Right, because it's not a fun place. Do you have any idea what hell is like? Huh? Why would God hell on a second? Do you have any place like hell is like? It says a place where your thirst is never quenched. It says a place where there's worms never die. It says where a place where there's total darkness and a lake of fire for eternity. Pretty miserable, isn't it? That's why we're out here trying to talk to you guys. Hope they'll open your eyes and understand what could happen to you. Wouldn't want anybody to go to hell. Would you want anybody to go to hell knowing that? No. So do you know what God did for us so that we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you want? He brought Jesus in and he made him human. And that saves everybody. Wait, he wasn't human? No. Uh-huh, well, kind of close, but basically what he says is that you need to repent and trust in Jesus Christ. See, if you just say, well, Jesus came here and God made him a man and he died, and he rose again, by the way, no one else ever done that, it's pretty awesome. He loved us so much, he took on the sin of the world and we don't have anything to do about it, then we're when you're saying that everybody's going to heaven. Aren't you? You kind of just classify, well, he died, so now we're in. No, see, you have to turn your turn from your sin. You have to put your a repentance when God says. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. Understand that part? So that's what we need to do. We need to turn from our sin. Sin no more. It's our faith in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of our sin. Not what we do. But he's already done for us. See, that's why the purgatory or the middle doesn't make any sense. Because why would I have to go into a middle someplace once I'm dead to be what? Taken out of there somehow after I'm dead? By whom? He already paid the price. Understand? It's done. He said it's finished. 
Now here's how you get the glow stick, by the way, because you didn't qualify, right? You weren't a good person. So it's called grace. See, in the Bible it says that you, by grace we've been saved. It's a gift from God, not of works, so no man can boast. Pretty cool, right? See, we can't do anything to get ourselves in. He's already done it for us. So I offer the glow sticks as a paltry example of what Jesus did on the cross. Right? I mean, he got beaten up, right? They nailed him to a cross to save us, and I'm offering you a glow stick. Not much of a comparison, is it? There you go. But I'm just trying to show you what the grace looks like. You didn't deserve it. You didn't qualify, because none of us does, by the way. I broke all the laws as well. There's not one of us here who can say they haven't. But yet, almost everybody says they're good. It's interesting, isn't that? Now you get a big smile. So all you got to do is reach up and take the one you want. You want to get one to your friend? You can do that too. She took the test. I think she also failed. <laughs> all right? Because she answered all the questions. You want one? That's what it's called, Grace. There you go. And she got to try to read them. Is the information is similar to what I just said? So you truly understand, because I can't make that happen with you. The only God can open your eyes and straighten you down that area. That, but you got to realize you deserve to be punished. See, it's not because you had a bad upbringing and your father didn't love you and, you know, your friends don't love you. It has nothing to do with it. Everybody's always pointing the finger at somebody else why you do what you do. But it's your choice, it's your decision. What you recognize is that you really deserve to go to hell. Because then you can say, thank you, Lord. You get on your face. I appreciate what you did for me, Jesus, by dying on that cross. And I'm going to turn from my sin. I'm not going to do it anymore. And I put my trust in you. And because of what you've done, I know I'm going right into heaven. He said, once that happens, your sins are wiped clean, past, present, and future. You receive the Holy Spirit who transforms you from the inside out. It's not head knowledge, it's a heart knowledge. That's what transforms you. But you have a different desire now. And you might be out here sharing what you just learned with other people you meet. Does that make sense? Wouldn't you do that? Right? I mean, once you find out, hey, I'm not going to hell anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Pretty cool, right? All right, God bless you, man. You take care. Thanks for stopping by and help us Thank out. Thank you.